Someone's generosity often brings consequences that are usually good. However, the case of the couple Jacob and Natalie was a little different. Would you welcome a young man, seemingly good, who was freezing in the middle of nowhere? Embark on this thrilling story now. If you're already a fan of our channel and want to support us in creating more captivating content, please show your love by hitting the like button. Let's dive into the story. Jacob and Natalie, a couple who had already passed the age of 40, were returning home after a joyful night at the wedding party of a close friend. The night wind blew gently through the car windows as they traveled the dark and winding road. Natalie was excited and full of energy, reminiscing about the fun moments of the party while Jacob drove attentively. She praised everything, from the decoration to the food, passing through the touching speech of the newlyweds. Did you see how beautiful the decoration was? And the food? I think I've never eaten anything so delicious at a wedding party, exclaimed Natalie with a sparkle in her eyes. Jacob smiled, appreciating his wife's excitement. He always loved to see her happy and excited. Yes, everything was amazing. And that groom's speech, so sincere and moving. I can't believe our friend finally got married, he replied, keeping his eyes on the dark road ahead. As they drove along the dark road, the landscape was illuminated only by the headlights of the car. The night was quiet, with not much traffic on the rural roads that led them back home. Suddenly, the car began to falter. Jacob felt the steering will become heavy and realized that something was wrong. He tried to accelerate, but the car didn't respond. With a sigh of frustration, he managed to pull the car over to the shoulder. Jacob and Natalie got out of the car, examining it under the dim light of the cell phone's flashlight. It seemed that something had happened to the engine. Jacob tried some quick fixes, but it soon became clear that they would need professional help. What are we going to do now? Natalie asked, looking around in the darkness of the night. Jacob looked at her, his face illuminated by the faint light of the cell phone. Don't worry, dear. I'll call the towing service. We'll sort this out. While waiting for the tow truck, Jacob and Natalie huddled together in the car seat, talking to distract themselves a little. As they waited for the tow truck, the couple was surprised by a gentle knock on the car window. Natalie jumped, letting out a scream of fright, instinctively grabbing Jacob's arm. Don't open it, Jacob. It could be dangerous, exclaimed Natalie, wide-eyed with fear. Jacob, calmer than his wife, also felt the tension rise. He imagined it could be a robbery, but something in the young man's demeanor made him hesitate. He studied the young man's face and realized that he didn't seem like a criminal. Nevertheless, he rolled down the window a bit, keeping a safe distance. What do you want? He asked cautiously. The young man, with tired eyes and a trembling voice, explained that he needed help. His shoes were worn out, his stomach was growling with hunger, and he had nowhere to go on that cold night. He wasn't a robber, just someone seeking shelter. Natalia insisted for Jacob not to leave the car, fearing it might be a trap, but he felt a tug at his heartstrings seeing the young man's situation. He asked his wife to remain calm and, despite her concern, stepped out of the car. Be careful, Jacob, shouted Natalie, apprehensive. Jacob approached the young man and, with a gentle expression, offered him some water they had in the car. Here you go. You need to hydrate, he said, handing him the bottle. The young man, surprised by the unexpected kindness, accepted the gesture gratefully. He thanked them with a shy smile, while Jacob talked to the young man, explaining that they didn't have much to offer at the moment but would call for help for him. Natalie watched from the car window, still a little nervous but starting to calm down in the face of her husband's composure. Gradually, Natalie convinced herself that the young man posed no threat. She got out of the car and approached slowly, observing the young man with compassion and curiosity. Hey, sorry for screaming, said the young man, his eyes filled with sadness. It wasn't my intention to scare you. Natalie smiled gently, trying to convey comfort to the young man. Don't worry, we're all a little nervous about the situation. What's your name, kid? My name is Ethan, replied the young man, his voice still trembling slightly. Ethan began to open up, sharing his story with pain in his eyes. He talked about losing his mother and his troubled relationship with his father, who was drunk more often than sober. How at 15, feeling helpless and desperate, 
he decided to run away from home to escape abuse and neglect. I've been trying to make it on my own since then, continued Ethan, his voice choked up. But it's hard, you know? People look at me and only see a dirty, ragged guy. No one wants to give me a chance, not even for a simple job. Natalie felt a pang in her heart listening to Ethan's story. She could imagine how difficult it had been for him to face so many hardships at such a young age. I'm so sorry for everything you've been through, Ethan, said Natalie, her voice soft and comforting. But you're not alone now. We'll help however we can. She looked at the young man with pity and offered him shelter for the night at their home. Ethan, we have a comfortable couch and some clean clothes that might fit you for the night. It's not much, but it's the least we can offer, said Natalie with a welcoming smile. Ethan was visibly moved by the offer. His eyes lit up with happiness as he repeatedly thanked the couple for their kindness. However, Jacob felt a certain discomfort with the idea. He discreetly nudged Natalie, conveying his concern and disapproval with the impulsive decision to offer shelter to a stranger. Natalie noticed Jacob's gesture and called him for a quick conversation by the side of the car. Jacob, I know it might seem a bit rash, but just imagine if it were our son in these conditions. We can't simply ignore someone in need, argued Natalie, trying to convince her husband. Jacob sighed, understanding his wife's perspective. He knew his wife had a generous heart and always acted based on compassion. You're right, Natalie, Jacob agreed, resigned. Let's offer shelter to Ethan for one night. But let's make it clear that it's only temporary help. With the decision made, they returned to Ethan, who still seemed incredulous at the couple's generosity. I don't want to cause trouble for you, Ethan said, his voice filled with humility. Jacob placed his hand on Ethan's shoulder, conveying comfort and reassurance. You're not causing us any trouble, Ethan. The tow truck will arrive soon to fix our car. You're welcome to spend the night at our house. Ethan looked at Jacob and Natalie with gratitude and relief. When they arrived home, Natalie quickly guided Ethan through the rooms, showing him the simple house. She explained that he could make himself at home and that the couch would be his place to spend the night. Ethan, this is the couch where you can sleep. Here are sheets and a blanket for you to keep warm, said Natalie, arranging the space as best as possible to ensure some comfort for the young man. Meanwhile, Jacob fetched some new clothes, a clean towel, and guided Ethan to the bathroom so he could take a shower and freshen up from the long night on the street. When Ethan emerged from the shower, feeling revitalized and grateful for the opportunity to clean himself, Natalie welcomed him back into the living room. Here you go, Ethan. I hope you're more comfortable now, said Natalie, indicating the couch with a welcoming gesture. You can sleep peacefully. We just ask that you try not to make too much noise, as our daughter Sophia is sleeping, and she needs to wake up early for college. Ethan nodded with a smile expressing his understanding and gratitude for the couple's hospitality. Before going to bed, Jacob took the young man to eat something, and then Ethan returned to the couch and fell asleep. In the middle of the night, a sharp scream pierced the silence of the house, waking Natalie and Jacob from a deep sleep. Startled, they jumped out of bed and rushed to Sophia's room, fearing the worst. As they passed through the living room, they turned on the light and saw Ethan still on the couch, as if he had just woken up from Sophia's scream. However, his eyes weren't swollen, indicating he wasn't sleeping deeply. With their hearts racing, Sophia's parents reached her room and found her pale and trembling with fear. What happened, sweetheart? Natalie asked, concerned, as she approached her daughter. Sophia, still scared, tried to explain between sobs that she had seen a shadow in the room. Her parents exchanged a look of concern but tried to reassure her, assuming it was just a bad dream. The dark night can play tricks on our imagination, darling. It must have been just a bad dream, said Jacob, trying to calm his daughter. Sophia, however, shook her head, insisting that it hadn't been a nightmare. Natalie stayed by her daughter's side until she fell asleep again, comforting her with reassuring words and affection. After Sophia finally calmed down and went back to sleep, Natalie also went to her room, carrying with her a sense of unease and a series of unanswered questions about what could have scared her daughter so deeply that night. At dawn, Natalie rose with a sigh, still pondering over the fright Sophia had experienced during the night. When she entered the living room, she saw Ethan neatly folding the sheets and blanket, 
preparing to leave the couch. You didn't have to do that, Ethan. Thank you so much for tidying up the couch, said Natalie, with a grateful smile. Ethan smiled timidly in response to the praise, thanking for the opportunity to have spent the night in such a welcoming home. Natalie then invited him to the kitchen as she began preparing breakfast. While slicing some fruits and setting bread to toast, she struck up a conversation with Ethan, wanting to get to know him a little better. So Ethan, what do you usually do during the day? I imagine your routine must be tough, and I'm sorry about that, said Natalie, keeping the conversation light and friendly. Ethan shared a bit about his daily routine on the streets, explaining how he usually looked for temporary shelters or sought opportunities for occasional work to survive. He mentioned that he usually collected cans on the streets in exchange for some money. He expressed his gratitude again for Natalie and Jacob's generosity in offering him a place to stay overnight. As they talked, the aroma of freshly brewed coffee and freshly cut fruits filled the kitchen. While Natalie and Ethan chatted in the kitchen, the silence of the house was broken by the sound of Sophia's sleepy footsteps. She entered the kitchen with a drowsy expression, mumbling something incomprehensible. However, her drowsiness instantly dissipated when her eyes fixed on Ethan. She froze completely, as if she had seen a ghost. Natalie immediately noticed her daughter's unease and decided to intervene before the situation became even more uncomfortable. Sophia dear, this is Ethan. He needed a place to spend the night, so we offered him shelter, explained Natalie, trying to reassure her daughter. Ethan smiled gently at Sophia and greeted her politely, but Sophia seemed to be struck by a spell. She stammered strangely, her eyes widened, clearly showing her surprise and discomfort. The tense atmosphere only dissipated when Jacob entered the kitchen. His presence brought palpable relief, and Sophia sat at the table, although she was still visibly nervous. Natalie, concerned about her daughter's state, asked affectionately if everything was okay. Sophia hesitated for a moment, but finally nodded, although her voice still sounded a bit shaky. Sophia finished eating quickly and, without waiting for anything else, hurriedly got up from the table. I have to go to college, she said quickly, already heading for the door. Her parents exchanged surprised looks at how quickly she was acting, but before they could say anything, she was practically out of sight. At the same moment, Ethan got up from the table, expressing his gratitude for the hospitality he received overnight. Thank you again for everything. I'll leave now, he said, getting ready to depart. However, when Sophia heard that Ethan was also about to leave, she abruptly halted her path toward the door, masking her reaction. Oh, I think I forgot something in the room. I'll go get it, she quickly said, trying to disguise her true intention. Jacob and Natalie accompanied Ethan to the door, thanking him once again for sharing their home with him overnight. They assured him he could come back if he needed anything, making it clear that he was welcome anytime. As Ethan walked away, Sophia took the opportunity to make sure he was really leaving. However, she disguised her curiosity. After supposedly forgetting something in the room, Sophia headed to the bathroom, closing the door behind her. Ten minutes passed, and she still hadn't come out. With her father already out of the house, Natalie began to worry about Sophia's delay. She knocked softly on the bathroom door. Sophia, are you okay in there? You said you needed to leave quickly for college. Sophia hastily made up an excuse from the other side of the door. Oh yes, mom. I'm almost ready. Just a minute. Finally, after a few more moments, Sophia emerged from the bathroom. She gave her mother a quick kiss and, with a hurried goodbye, rushed out the door, finally heading towards college. Natalie watched her daughter leave with concern, wondering what could have caused such haste and nervousness on a morning that should have been like any other. However, she decided to save the questions for later, trusting that Sophia would eventually share what was going on when she was ready. Sophia walked along the streets, still deserted due to the early hour. The tranquil silence was abruptly interrupted when she heard footsteps echoing behind her. Instinctively, she turned around, and her heart froze as she recognized Ethan, the same young man who had spent the night at her house. Without hesitation, Sophia panicked and started to run, desperate to get away from the frightening figure following her. Her footsteps echoed through the empty streets as she tried to escape the imminent danger. Ethan began to chase after her, 
The surreal scene of urban pursuit continued, with Sophia running as fast as she could, her heart pounding uncontrollably in her chest, while Ethan persisted in his attempt to catch up with her. Ethan finally caught up with her, grabbing her by the arm and pulling her into a nearby alley. Desperate, Sophia tried to break free, but Ethan's arms were strong and relentless. He pinned her against the wall, his face inches from hers. Well, 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 look who we have here. Do you remember me, sweetheart? Ethan asked, his voice filled with anger and irony. Sophia began to sob, tears streaming down her face as she tried to articulate words of apology and explanation. She knew exactly who Ethan was and what he represented in her life. Sophia and Ethan were already acquainted, but not in a benign way. When Sophia was a teenager, she faced a difficult time and turned to Ethan for financial help. However, the help came with a steep price. Ethan charged three times more interest than agreed, leaving Sophia trapped in a web of mounting debts she couldn't pay off. The interest just kept piling up. Unable to repay the debt, Sophia was forced to flee, but Ethan didn't let her escape so easily. He relentlessly pursued her over the years, meticulously planning each move to get closer to her again. Ethan had orchestrated the entire incident, from sabotaging Sophia's parents' car to inventing a sad story to gain her trust. All of it was just a ploy to reach her and claim what he believed was rightfully his. The revelation left Sophia shocked and afraid, realizing she hadn't escaped her past as she'd imagined. Ethan was startled by someone grabbing his shoulder firmly. As he turned around, he took a blow to his face, causing him to stagger backward. It was Sophia's father, Jacob, who had sensed something was amiss and decided to pretend he was going to work to follow him. Before Ethan could react, Jacob landed another blow, leaving him dazed. But Ethan quickly recovered and advanced toward Jacob, ready to retaliate. However, before he could reach him, he was startled by the sound of police sirens approaching rapidly. Jacob had acted swiftly, and as soon as he realized his daughter was truly being pursued, he called the police. While Ethan tried to process the sudden turn of events, the police cruisers arrived and surrounded the alley. With few options for escape, Ethan attempted to flee, but he was quickly intercepted and arrested by the officers on the scene. After all the commotion, Sophia finally revealed the truth to her parents, who reprimanded her but supported her in the situation. Finally, Sophia found herself free. How do you think this kind of attitude from Ethan could harm other people in genuine need? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you were touched by this story, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't miss out on another heartfelt video, which you can find on your screen right now. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss an update, and until the next video.